is a fleet of semi-autonomous rolling orbs. They were created to move, sing, dance, illuminate, and interact with one another and those around them. While they can play back set dances, they're most interesting when the controls are given over to the orbs themselves. By acting in concert, the individuals, together, behave in ways that not even their creators have foreseen. This is the generative music and light algorithm that we use. Um, so basically we have a, we have a system where um, the, it's generative music, so it's essentially composing the music itself. And it's doing that by having different sets of sound files, and it will randomly play them against each other to make a composition. Each orb gets a single set of sound files, and um, will then choose a, choose a sound to play and play it on its own orb, and uh, other ones will play things. So as you're walking through them, you will hear a song being played in multiple parts, each one coming from a different place. Now here's where the orb starts composing it, where the, where the whole swarm starts doing the composition. Is the swarm knows where everything is. It knows where each orb is, and it knows the distances between them. So each orb will know who its neighbors are, how far away they are, and what they're playing. And so when it goes to choose its next sound, it, it ha it, if it's close to another orb, it will have to play a sound that's in harmony with that one. If it's farther away, it's not so constrained. So as orbs come together, they start making they start making sounds that are harmonious with each other. And if there's a cluster of orbs, they'll be playing something over here that works together. One off in the distance might have a bit of contrast to it, but as it comes up closer, it'll start playing things that are similar. So here's an example of um, one timeline that plays a uh, generative music song called Picker Lake. Hear, you can hear it choosing the different sounds as they move. Um, now we do a similar thing with the colors. If you look here, you have a you have you have a display of the color scheme. Now the colors are all kind of reds now, so it's an analogous color scheme. And if you look at the vector here, the uh, the, the colors basically go along with the different different colors at different places, and they're all constrained to be close to each other geometrically. And you know what, what we just saw was the timeline changing what color scheme it uses. You can use a split complement. You can make them a triad so that they're, they're equidistant on the color wheel. And as you move this around, you can see the orbs changing color according to the color scheme. Um, now the interesting thing is you can see these little numbers moving around. So what they're doing is the colors of each orb are taking a random walk. They get to move around a little bit. And as the orbs get closer together, their walk is constrained to be closer to the color scheme. So they might have random colors doing whatever, but when they get close together, their colors get harmonious and their sounds get harmonious. It's like they work together when the orbs are closer together. This is how the swarm is composing both the music that it's playing and the color scheme, the lighting scheme that's going on with it. Any machine, no matter how well designed, no matter how aesthetically envisioned, no matter how much its shape is evocative of things other machines, uh, other than machines, is going to seem ultimately like a machine. There's only so far that you can go to escape its machine nature. We feel that by building more than one of these things, we can transcend the machine nature. Now, this is based on some intuition that we've gained from a couple different domains. Uh, one of them is a common model of the mind. Uh, this model uh, was put forth by a man named Marvin Mensky. Uh, he wrote an excellent book called Society of Mind. In this book, he, he puts forth the idea that our persona, our consciousness, is not really a unitary existence. It's actually the result of several competing uh, functional agents within the brain. And these functional agents are constantly battling to control our own, our own personality. Uh, but the only way that the consciousness, the true, true life, the unpredict unpredictable nature of, of human life can arise is, is by this constant argument between these agents. No, it's obviously not alive. 
it's a hunk of metal. I, I pull the switch on the side and it stops. But it's alive. It, it's a, it's about, the piece is about interaction. It's about uh, the, 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 or, the orbs are interacting with, with each other. Uh, there's this, all these complicated computer systems that, that make it so that, so that this thing knows where the other orbs are, knows where all of them are, and how they, how they work together. Uh, but what it's about is the orbs interacting with the people, or, or at least people, people seeing them as, as moving things. And it has to be a moving, physical, heavy, solid object. I don't view it as people dancing with the orbs or dancing with robots. I don't think they were dancing with robots. The fact that they're robotic is simply a way for these kinetic alt sculptures to be controlled in a very undefined way. I mean, you have a lot of flexibility with robots, whereas most kinetic art pieces are limited to some very mechanical element. These are still mechanical, but they have a lot of flexibility due to the fact that they're robots. People weren't dancing with that fact. They don't care that they're robots. They care that they're beautiful and that they're moving. And that is what we have. Robotics is a rapidly developing technology and most of its applications have been purely pragmatic. This is why we wanted to use it and explore its soulful side, its humane side. In the future, there's gonna be robots surrounding us. It'll be in our homes, in our workplace. It will be something that we see day to day. And if, if uh, we don't take the time to question their humane aspects, their emotional aspects, their, their aesthetic aspects, then we're gonna be living in a very boring world. And people aren't used to seeing orbs. They're used to seeing robots in a certain way. They're used to seeing robots that walk, robots that roll on, you know, on, on, on wheels or on treads. Um, so something that is just a geometric shape um, and rolls um, and, and moves in different ways um, is interesting. And it kind of gets people thinking and, and looking at them and watching them. The immersion behavior is an interesting concept. I mean, it, it uh, typically refers to things which uh, arise in complex systems uh, of, of many different natures, and in this case of, complex, of a complex system consisting of many individuals. And you can direct the individuals in simple ways, and, but once you put them all together, find that the, the system exhibits complex behavior. This is the emergent behavior which basically comes out of nothing to suddenly surprise you.